performed in public appeal and in accomplishments, and she's worked in canvas, ceramic, sculpture, tapestry. Um, her images have appeared on everything from Radio City Music Hall covers to ad commissions for, um, for Coca-Cola and for Bloomingdale. So this is, this is an artist who covers a lot of territory here. Um, I would like to ask her to come up and say a few words about her experience working on this collection. I'll also add that in our brief conversation, she was kind enough to confirm my instincts about what I saw here. And it seems very much to me, in looking at this project, that what's happening here is this desire to invoke the intellectual through the visual, or maybe the other way around, maybe to invoke the visual by coming at it through the intellectual. Um, I thank Jane for that wonderful testimony to um, what a liberal arts education does and want to remind everybody that it involves the visual, that the, that the visual arts are, of course, a, a really, really important part of the liberal arts education. Um, and this, this project really places them in conversation in, in an interesting way. So, uh, Robin, will you please come on? I don't think I can reach the mic either. So. <laughs> of this whole cast of characters really sums up truth and God. And I thank you for your school motto. Um, I've been an artist my whole life. I really have been privileged to wake up every day and paint and invent imagery from my own mind. And I've been very lucky to reach a public that was able to appreciate it. I was hoping to see some students here today so I could say to you how important it is to find your own core competency in life, what you have been endowed with, what are your talents and your gifts, what is something that you can actually leave as a legacy on, on this earth that is a meaningful legacy, because if each one of these people is going to have their wisdom in, in our minds and our hearts for posterity. So. I'm going to lose my thought, of course, as I always do. But um, anyway, it's a search for yourselves in many ways to look at a painting and see what it is you're feeling within yourself. It is informative to look at history and realize, my God, this is a timeline of history. From Moses to Oprah, who may, may not be a great mind, but has certainly brought tremendous wisdom to the masses in her own way.
hope it inspires you and impacts you in some way. If anybody has any questions. <laughs> traditionally, you know, an artistic space. Um, can you explain that? Um, no space is safe, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> <laughs> so I really wanted to dedicate something to Janie, because that was her suggestion of a great mind, and I felt that would be a very interesting way to frame it, basically. And I have done it on many others since then. When I get an idea, I really kind of work it. So. Yeah. I like it. Thank you. So um, the power of the eyes in all of your paintings seems to have, you know, a very large part of, of the expression. I mean, they rivet you, they, they center your vision, and, and most of them have two eyes, and some of them have one eye, and Shakespeare in particular has only one eye, and he's yeah. not in profile. I mean, Virginia Woolf is in profile, and therefore she has one eye, and I'm trying to understand, you know, I'm trying to understand the eyes and how you decide whose eyes are closer together, whose <coughs> eyes are far apart, and who only has a cyclops eye. Well, I, that's a good question, which I tried to answer in my mind many times. But I was also Shakespeare was a complete invention of my mind. But as I was studying actual photos or whatever visual references were available for these individuals. I decided, I think this face really needs two eyes. It's going to make the impact. So it was sort of an artistic decision, basically. But I did have specific instructions from Dick that I was not to pick up a paintbrush or paint anything <laughs> until I researched these individuals. So until you really study a light, a face is only two eyes, a nose, and a mouth. When you learn about the life and what the person went through, it becomes a, an experience of humanity. My humanity saw their eyes. So maybe I was able to actually bring the eyes out. So it's the search for humanity, basically, that is what these eyes are all about. I hope I've answered the question. I always did one eye before this, but <laughs> for Dick to <laughs> Yeah, uh, other than Da Vinci and some people who painted or recreation or whatever. There's only one, you know, person you call visual artist in the collection. So who would you add, or in this exhibit, excuse me, as I don't Who would I add to the Great Minds collection? As an art as, as an artist. artist, well Picasso I would do in a second because he is a true genius, a true mentor. <laughs> How many eyes would he have? That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> None. Good. 20. Yeah, the first one. Three. Uh, what other artists? Um, I don't know. I don't know what other artists. Leger? The collection is very much in progress. We're asking our viewers to say who they think is missing and who's important to you. Who, who do you have knowledge of that really has lasting, has knowledge for perpetuity. So maybe you could answer that. Who's missing for you? Who's missing for any of you? Really, that's your question. Because as you study the collection, and we're going to be adding to it, we'd love to hear. Galileo, Copernicus. Yes. Well, we have Mozart. Beethoven would be incredible for me to paint because of his passion. and his, It would be a very very, what shall I say, physical experience, basically, because of who he is as a human being. I think you should do Mick Jagger. Wow. Okay. <laughs> good. Good position. <laughs> so. Anybody else? Yes. Okay. Thank good you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Now I get to introduce